student assalamu alaikum how are you all i hope you all are well by the grace of almighty allah i am muhammad majhar islam lecturer department of physics maston college today i am going to discuss a knowledge based question from chapter 2 which is called motion i hope this class will help you a lot for your better study at home so dear students let's get started so here is the first definition displacement the rate of change of position in definite direction is called displacement so uh, we can say that according to the uh, definition uh, the direction of a displacement is fixed so we can say that the displacement is a vector quantity okay so uh, you know the unit of a displacement which is meter and the dimension of a displacement uh, is capital L. Okay, so the dimension of a displacement is capital L. Here is the next one, which is speed. The rate of change of distance with respect to time is called speed. So according to the definition, we can say that speed basically depends on the distance and time. And you know the distance is a scalar quantity, so we can say easily the speed is a scalar quantity. Okay, uh, an interesting part is we can calculate speed by using distance and time, and the equation of speed, which is distance divided by time. Okay, so the unit of a speed which is meter per second, and the dimension of speed which is lt inverse 1. Lt inverse 1. The next one, which is velocity. The rate of change of displacement of an object is called velocity. So, uh, according to the definition, we can say that velocity depends on the displacement. And you know, displacement is a vector quantity. So, we can say that velocity is also a vector quantity. Okay. So, the unit of velocity is quite similar uh, uh, in, in, to speed. So, we can say that the unit of velocity is meter per second and the dimension of a velocity which is Lt inverse 1. Okay? So, the next definition is uniform velocity. When the magnitude and direction of a velocity and object remain constant, then it is called uniform velocity. So, according to the uniform velocity, the magnitude and direction uh, is constant. That means, the magnitude and direction is not changed according to the definition of uniform velocity. Okay. So, the next uh, definition is uniform acceleration. If the rate of increase of velocity remain constant with respect to time, then it is called uniform acceleration. Right. So, according to the definition, we can say that the increase of velocity remains constant with respect to time. That means, when the time is increased, where the increase of velocity remains constant. That means, the increase of velocity will not change with respect to time. It's called uniform acceleration. Right, dear students? The next definition is acceleration and the rate of change of velocity with respect to time is called acceleration. That means acceleration basically uh, says that the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Okay. If there is no change of velocity then the acceleration is zero. But uh, if there is a change of velocity with respect to time, then acceleration uh, will definitely be positive, we can say that, right? So, you know, the acceleration unit is ms inverse 2, which is meter per second square, and the dimension of acceleration is lt inverse 2. Okay, so you, you also know the equation of acceleration. You know the acceleration denoted by a and the equation of acceleration is v minus u divided by t where v is the final velocity v is the final velocity and u is the initial velocity initial velocity 
okay and according to the uh, definition we can say that acceleration basically depends the change of velocity and time and you know the velocity is a vector quantity so we can say that acceleration is also a vector quantity okay so the next definition is deceleration the rate of decrease of velocity with respect to time is called deceleration uh, so we can say that if an object of uh, velocity uh, gradually decrease with respect to time then we can say uh, that that is called deceleration okay or we can say that another definition of deceleration which is negative acceleration is called deceleration and you know when the velocity decrease with respect to time then the acceleration will be negative because velocity uh, is decreasing with respect to time okay so a uh, deceleration is basically uh, another acceleration but uh, deceleration basically uh, means uh, the negative acceleration okay so uh, the unit and the dimension of deceleration is quite similar of acceleration so we can say that the unit of deceleration is also meter per second square and the dimension of uh, deceleration which is uh, lt inverse 2 okay here is the next one which is periodic motion if uh, the motion of a moving object passes repeatedly through a definite point in the same direction in the same manner in a definite interval of time then this motion is called periodic motion that means any object motion can be a periodic motion if any object maintain two requirements the first one is an object uh, definitely passes a point from the same direction in the same time this, this is the requirement uh, of a periodic motion okay dear students the next one is vibratory motion if an object executing periodic motion moves in a definite direction for one half of its time period, period and exactly for other half in the opposite direction then it's called uh, vibratory motion we can give you an example of a vibratory motion and uh, the example of a vibratory motion is a simple pendulum okay dear students and the next one is acceleration due to the gravity the rate of increase of velocity of an object falling freely on the surface is called acceleration due to the gravity that means when an object falling freely to the ground then uh, the acceleration due to the gravity is working okay and you know the acceleration due to the gravity denoted by small g and the value of small g is 9.8 uh, ms inverse 2 in the surface okay dear students next one is second law of free falling body and the law is uh, the velocity acquired by a freely falling body from rest in a given time is directly proportional to the time uh, that means if you release an object uh, from rest then the if the falling time is increased then the uh, velocity will definitely increase according to the second law of freely falling body okay and you know the velocity denoted by v and the time denoted by t so according to the law we can write uh, the velocity is directly proportional uh, to the given time t okay so this is the second law of freely falling body so here is the third law of freely falling body uh, the statement is the distance uh, traversed by a freely falling body from rest in a given time is directly proportional to the square of the given time this is the statement of third law of freely falling body okay uh, so according to the law uh, you know that uh, for the freely falling body the distance uh, we can consider the distance um, 
uh, by height and you know uh, the height denoted by h and the given time denoted by t then we can uh, write according to the statement that uh, height h uh, is directly proportional to the square of the given time that means we can write h proportional to the t square that means uh, when you release an object um, uh, uh, for the freely falling body if the falling time is one second then according to the law we can say uh, the height will be one meter if the falling time of an object is two second then the height will be four meter because the relation between h and t is h proportional t square similarly we can say that if the falling time of an object is three second then the height will be nine meter according to the third law of freely falling body so dear students i hope you all enjoy the class our today's class and I think this class will help you uh, for your better study at home and you should practice this important definition uh, and this kinds of definition is very important for your exam uh, and so you should practice this definition and uh, dear students stay safe uh, and inshallah we will see you in our next class till then Allah Hafiz Assalamu Alaikum